Have you ever found yourself confused by the complexities of calcium regulation? Have you ever wondered about the amazing feedback and coordinated role of vitamin D, parathormone and calcitonin in calcium homeostasis? Join me as we explore the calcium homeostasis. Myself, Dr. Kadir Stalin. When we think of calcium, we often associate it with bones. However, its significance extends far beyond bone health, playing a vital role in muscle and nerve function, blood clotting and numerous other bodily processes. Although needed for other organs, over 99% of our body calcium is stored within our bones as a body reserve. So what happens when blood calcium level decline? The first line of defense is our bone as they readily release calcium to restore the balance. Even otherwise, 400 mg of calcium is released from bone daily. But is there another way our body can maintain the calcium level without relying solely on depleting our skeletal reservoirs? Yes, our body have the remarkable ability to increase calcium absorption from the intestine and enhance calcium resorption in the kidney with the help of few hormones. The critical players in calcium homeostasis are vitamin D and parathormone from parathyroid gland in the neck. These hormones serve as the primary regulators of serum calcium level and to maintain the equilibrium of calcium in the blood. Pause the video and look for your daily requirements. Why this is important? Calcium balance is usually positive in the first three decades of life and negative after the fourth decade. So proper dietary requirement is essential in order to maintain the calcium level in your serum. What are the mechanism of action of vitamin D? and parathormone. 7-dehydrocholesterol, the precursor of vitamin D3, is converted to vitamin D3 in the skin when exposed to the UV beta radiation from the sun. This vitamin D3, along with the dietary source of vitamin D3, is transported in the blood by vitamin D binding protein. However, it is not yet active at this stage. In the liver, it undergoes hydroxylation at the 25th position to form 25 hydroxy vitamin D. 25 hydroxy vitamin D then reaches the kidney where it undergoes the final step of activation with the enzyme 1 hydroxylase producing 125 hydroxy vitamin D. This active form of vitamin D play three primary roles and has one feedback role. Firstly, it activates the osteoclast through the osteoblast promoting bone resorption and releasing calcium and phosphate into the blood. Secondly, it enhances the absorption of calcium and phosphate from the gut and promotes the reabsorption in the kidney. By executing these mechanism, it ensures the calcium and phosphorus levels are maintained in the blood. The calcium in the blood is utilized for metabolic and neuromuscular function and the excess calcium is again used to replenish the bone reserve. When the diet lacks an adequate amount of calcium, the body resorbs calcium completely from the bone, resulting in weakened bone. On the other hand, if the diet contains sufficient amount of calcium, the excess metabolic calcium in the blood is deposited back into the bone. This is the reason why doctors often prescribe vitamin D supplements along with the calcium. Without sufficient amount of calcium intake, vitamin D can lead to excessive reabsorption of calcium from the bone instead of aiding the bone health. Vitamin D also has a feedback role. Increasing level of vitamin D in the blood inhibit the action of parathormones on the kidney, creating a negative feedback mechanism that prevents the activation of vitamin D precursors. So, how does parathormone work? When the blood calcium decreases, parathyroid gland senses it and secrete parathormone. Parathormone has two major roles. Firstly, it stimulates osteoclast through osteoblast causing bone resorption and releasing calcium into the blood. Secondly, it acts on kidney increasing the calcium resorption from urine and also promotes the activation of vitamin D. As a result, blood calcium level increases. This increased blood calcium negatively inhibits the production of further parathormone and stimulates the production of another hormone called as calcitonin. They are secreted from the parafollicle cells of the thyroid gland. Although limited, calcitonin inhibits 
osteoclast directly and allow the osteoblast to deposit the calcium from the blood into the bone decreasing the serum calcium level. One small difference between the action of parathormone and vitamin D is that vitamin D increases both blood calcium and phosphate level whereas parathormone increases blood calcium but decreases the blood phosphate level. Other hormones such as estrogen inhibit the bone resorption and prevents the bone loss. Corticosteroids on the other hand can increase bone loss causing osteoporosis. Large doses of thyroxine can also lead to osteoporosis but it is important to note that thyroid hormone is also necessary for bone healing. Growth hormone plays a significant role in maintaining a positive calcium balance. That is all about the calcium homeostasis, vitamin D, parathormone, calcitonin and other hormones. If you have any questions related to this topic, please feel free to post it as a comment. We are happy to help you out. Also, please comment your feedback about this video. It will help us to make much better video in future. Thank you.